Hello, welcome at Toradex webinars. And this webinar today is about how to use a Toradex sum on a custom hardware and connect a multi-touch display via LVDS interface. Now, a partner today is Karyotronics. It's a Toradex partner. My name is Matthias Golke, Techner Solution Architect at Toradex. And our partner today from Teratronics is Mario Andreas Stahl, Product Manager and Head of Sales at Karyotronics. And here I want to talk a little bit about um, Toradex for those who not already know us. Uh, we are a leading module, uh, leading module provider for embedded ARM modules. Uh, we are located in Lucerne, Switzerland, but we have offices around the world. Uh, in the US, it's Seattle, in Toronto, and Canada, and then we have offices in Brazil, India, and Japan, Korea, and in, in, in China. Um, we make computing modules easy to use, and uh, we build reliable ARM system on modules. Uh, with the whole software ecosystem and hardware carrier board ecosystem uh, so that you can achieve the lowest cost of ownership um, because of all the support resources um, you can get to market faster. Okay, we are founded in, in 2003. We are have around 3,000 active um, customers worldwide, uh, more than 150 employees, uh, eight global offices, and um, uh, we have over 80 partners uh, in, in, uh, in supporting our ecosystem. Um, so what do we do? We do embedded ARM system on modules and with the focus on reliability, a long-term maintenance of the software and BSP and also the module itself. And so some of the early models we introduced when we began in 2003, they've been like 19 years available. So we produce the modules as long as the parts are available and during the lifetime uh, supporting with redesigns and with software adoption. Um, so that and that it's scalable, we have in the families of every SOM, and we will see that several modules so that you can steal, uh, scale the whole system uh, performance and price wise. The good thing about Toradex is we also have modules on stock. We do a certain configurations on stock uh, where other vendors might be only do BTO. We do BTO as well, but we always make sure there is a standard module available off the shelf. Um, hardware is not everything, and um, so a lot of our employees are working in the software support. And so we have, of course, the Yocto-based uh, BSP we maintain and we try to mainline everything. That's the goal. But we also still support some of legacy Windows customers, have partners for Android, and we have an own solution for for easy deployment of your end application and that's Torizon. It's a Yocto based uh, uh, build uh, open source op uh, operating system, but which comes ready to build and you can install it. And this uh, basically allows to your, uh, your application uh, to live in Docker containers. I will talk more about it in a second. Um, there's the development tools we have and the maintenance of those. And then, uh, you know, we try to ease of use with our tools and also with our support infrastructure and our website and forums and um, with the whole ecosystem around the SOM. So um, before I go into what the software is Horizon, I want to just uh, sum up a little bit our uh, module portfolio. And you see there, um, the, uh, the modules at the bottom are like the longest available already. That's it started with that, with the Colibri family. And that's um, modules which are compatible. So, and you can scale from something like the IMX6 ULL to IMX7, IMX6, and the IMX8X. Uh, and that is the Colibri family, um, small form factor uh, and, the next family was the Apollos, which you see on the top right, and that was for high-speed interfaces and performance. So you have PCI Express and features uh, with like MIPI, and um, 
these are like high performance. And the mid the in the middle one was a third family, the Verdon family, very successful family. And that is basically uh, the combination of small form factor, a low power and performance. And uh, you, you see that's a scalable uh, a scalable family as well. And very new, we introduced it during the embedded world of Nuremberg, Germany, is the Aquila family. And that is a SOM where we're targeting the performance, which you usually only get in 688, uh, 86, uh, x86 desktop performance-like uh, chips, where you need high interference of uh, AI models where you head up to connect to 12 MEPI cameras. So it's like a real autonomous uh, robots, um, smart camera solution, uh, the upper higher end we, we basically um, uh, targeting with this family. Um, where do you find Toradex? It's um, in healthcare. You find a lot of healthcare applications where you know people want reliable hardware with a long time maintenance. Then, of course, the industrial automation and robotics market. Then in transportation, trains, and uh, logistics and architecture. And then in the energy metering and renewable industry, um, in the renewable industry, and in everything which has to do with uh, smart, uh, smart city. The volumes per customer and project is from 500 to 100k and we're seeing even application with more than 100k because since that embedded system gets more complex actually it pays off um to use a module and it's a uh, um even in higher quantities with all the ecosystem uh, support we offer let me uh, lose a few words on the horizon operating system this is um, a, a Yocto open source, Yocto built project, but for the people where Yocto is maybe a little bit too deep in the embedded topic and you want to focus on your target application and uh, not have such a steep learning curve you have with building Yocto project. And this is a ready to go minimal operating system with the underlying um, layer for security maintained also by Toradex. It connects to our OTA cloud service, so you can do a secure fleet management and update. And your application lives in containers like Docker containers, where there is plenty of partners with special containers like for industrial automation, but also you can run your favorite language or framework in that container. So, and um, you can get faster time to market. We have um, uh, the, the a possibility to remote access these devices, to simply monitor the devices. We have like a, a, a hardened security and remote control of the updates. Um, we have also the option that you could enhance this. If there's something missing in the horizon, you can enhance basically that because the uh, project is an Yocto open source project as well. Um, and that allows highly modern basically software development um, and a faster time to market with, these, with this system and you can focus on the application. So today we will uh, see that in use, but first of all, since we talk about how to use a Toradex uh, system on module on a custom hardware and connect a multi-touch uh, touch display um, via LVDS. So I just want to give a very quick introduction of different display interfaces um, uh, we are seeing on, um, on our carrier boards or in this module market. And so in the early days, you've been seeing an RGB interface, right? Um, and uh, then uh, uh, for several reasons, I will talk more about that, like signal integrity, you saw this being replaced by LVDS, where you serialize these parallel data streams uh, over differential buses to the displays, which allows longer cable runs to the display. And, and and it mitigates a little bit that signal uh, integrity thing and EMC emission. And some of the modules we have also um, have HDMI. So that some models have that natively, depending on the family. 
and you also see MIPI DSI. While MIPI DSI is, of course, a very modern interface, it's also more challenging to design. I mean, with RGB or LVDS, you can easily scope these signals and see what's going on. Uh, with a serial bus and the gigabit range, like several MIPI DSI lanes, it becomes more challenging. Also, the complex protocols basically on there. This is why we still see a lot of the industrial uh, applications favoring also LVDS. Also there, a change to a different vendor could be as easy as just customizing a cable. Um, you uh, probably heard about that it's hard to get embedded displays for a very long time, you know, and, and our modules are often longer available when you can get a display. So you might have to have a way during your a production of your product to uh, change and transfer to a different display manufacturer. If it's an LVDS display, it's often very straightforward and with a customized cable in, in the worst case. Um, with MIPI, it's a more solution tailored to a certain display. What you see here on the right side, it's our Dahlia development board. And you see in that red dotted uh, box, you see uh, uh, a little uh, socket which can house different adapter boards. And that is that on this plug there, we have the MIPI DSI and control signals and power. And now you can plug different converter boards on top of this, like here, this LVDS, uh, DSI to LVDS um, interposer board. And that means the board, which has here uh, the generic DSI, allows you to use a DSI to LVDS um, interposer in development, or even an HDMI. Uh, so there is some NXP processors out there in the Verdon family, the Verdon family standard, um, for example, only guarantees over the complex family to always have the MIPI DSI interface. But if you need something like a HDMI, then you have the DSI to HDMI, you have DSI to LVDS, and also MIPI to DSI to MIPI DSI, and that's the one in the top right corner. So now the question might arise, so why would I want to have a DSI to DSI? Why not having uh, the F FPC or flat wire connected directly on the carrier board? The reason for that is we did that for development so that you can easily evaluate and there are so many different MIPI DSI display vendors, and sometimes and there is no standard pinout. We have a standard pinout for the uh, flat wire connector on our boards, right? But if you want to integrate a certain vendor, then you just might have to do that little adapter board because some displays might have the uh, power conversion for the backlight display already on board, and you just feed them 3.3 volts. Some might need 12 volt and have a different display solution, or they require you to have a charge pump on your board to provide them with the right power uh, for the LED. And that could be done on that little interposer. And that would be kind of uh, ways for the MIPI. Um, and if you go back to the LVDS in the middle, you see that white connector, and that would be our standard LVDS connector you find on the development boards of our partners and our own development boards uh, so that it's compatible, right? The RGB on the left top, it's just there here to make the things complete. You see that still on modules with a Codibri, but I tell you, it's always challenging EMC wise uh, to make pass something with RGB. So this is why a lot of people went away from RGB. And you see that um, in the newer chips, you don't see this interfaces. So to be complete, some people tell me, oh, I have a display at home and it has a USB and I only plug in the USB. That's often a proprietary technology. There's a company who makes a proprietary chip and then there is a driver you host on Linux or Linux or on Windows, which can basically stream a compressed image to that over USB. But that is not a standard of USB, and therefore it's not something we focus on. 
but there is something coming up in the future. You see down at the right corner, the USB-C connector. And this one can do multiple things, uh, sophisticated power delivery, different speeds of USB, and also things like Thunderbolt, which is kind of a serialized PCI Express if you want, and also DisplayPort. So again, it's not that the display signal there with USB-C would go over the USB signal. It's just utilizing the USB-C connector to provide two data lanes for embedded display port. If you want to have that, it's a little more complex because you need to first convert the MEP signal with a converter chip to display port. And then you have to have a complex analog switching solution, which is USB-C compliant, who then uh, can route the display port signal to the, the spare um, data pins on that connector. But that is for sure something to monitor. But beloved in the embedded world is the LVDS uh, display interface. And I just want to take a quick look here. That would be if you look uh, having a Colibri module, on the left side, you would have an RGB input from a parallel interface, RGB interface. And for having a longer cable runs, better signal immunity, and no, not so big EMC issues, you would then continue. And these eight bits are serialized in, 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 in data, um, symmetric data lines. Um, and this is kind of a converter chip you would find on boards like the IRIS 2.0 Colibri board. And you see there is a few pins here on the bottom, uh, like some say six bit, eight bit or map or the mode. And in, in some of the designs where you use a converter, these are hardwired, right? With pull ups and pull downs, you configure that. There's different modes and bit streams and you have to check what bitstream your display wants. And is it an eight bit stream coming in, a six bit stream, uh, and which uh, mapping it is of how the pixels are clocked in. And this could be basically here in that scenario, a uh, hardwired over these GPIOs, but uh, processors like the Verdin IMX8 Plus has a native LVDS display where the configuration of the LVDS um, uh, mapping and so on is basically done in the device tree on the Linux co-processor side. And in, it's not like we're going in here with 8-bit and converting it, but we have a native LVDS display. So this plug you see on all our boards, and that enables um, dual lane and single lane LVDS. And then depending on your display, you have to configure the device tree or the device tree overlay um, to, to work with the display. And that's what we will uh, talk in depth about, um, uh, about here. So that's kind of a quick um, introduction into the into the into the LVDS topic, and uh, now I want to give the word to Mario from Carriotronics uh, to guide you through the process of how to integrate that. Hi, Mario. How are you doing? Hey, uh, I'm fine. Thank you, Matthias, uh, for this introduction. Before I introduce myself, I have a short question to the audience. So, which of the following display interfaces do you prefer? We make this very quick, five seconds left, and then we see the results. Oh, yeah, so uh, LVDS is the favorite one, I guess. Um, surprise. <laughs> cool. Um, thank you for, for um, doing this. Um, yeah, my name is Mario. I'm working as a sales manager um, uh, for the Carriotronic, and I introduce myself often as the interface between nerds and ordinary people, because ordinary people think that I'm a nerd, and the nerds don't want to play with me because I'm not smart enough. So I decided to be the part um, of communicate, communication between customers and our developers. Um, uh, first of all, I will show you something from our website. Um, 
and I uh, told you something about the Karyotronic. Karyotronic is founded by Kevin Spanaus. This is the uh, smart and good looking guy here in the middle. And um, Dominic Pushko and I came in this company in, in the, the beginning of this year. So we have about 10, uh, 10 people around here. We have a production line here. And um, we, came from the, um, we came from the microcontroller side. So we built um, IoT things, um, ESP32, um, if you have issues with um, EP2040 uh, or something, um, we're very good uh, to build small hardware microcontroller um, applications. For sure, we are very good in the software side too. So special um, if you have any issues with the communication protocols or something, um, we are very, very, um, 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 we are very experienced. Uh, we have a lot of experience in this field. So um, ask me about uh, everything. And the reason why we are here in this um, webinar is because we are very, very proud to be an official partner of Toradex. So we solved maybe all the, the, the issues for, for carrier boards. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so we got a lot of uh, off-the-shelf um, um, solutions here um, and make customer customized uh, things. So, and we come from the carrier boards to uh, completely um, IPCs or touch panel PCs. So we used always um, a system or module from Toradex. We have an own build it um, uh, carrier board or we uh, take uh, uh, one off the shelf and then we make an enclosure and you see here a touch panel monitor uh, we have um, completely ESP um, EP IP 65 solutions um, this is a gateway or we are um, we see ourselves as full service developer so when you have an integration of a touch panel um, so we can we can do that from the construction site too. So yeah, but that's enough about me. That's enough about the company. So um, I would start with a prepared video uh, to show you uh, how easy it is to um, uh, to um, um, bring the LVDS on your device. In this video, I show you how easy it is to install a Toradex embedded Linux on a metal board and connect it to a multi-touch display via LVDS. Before we start, please pay attention to the ESG protection. We start with the metal board from Toradex and put in an IMX8M+. Connect the board to our network. Plug the touch controller into the USB-C port and plug in the LVDS cable. To find out how the debug pin assignment is via URAD, we download the datasheet from the Mellow board, search for debug and find the pin assignment here. Now we plug in the debug. Before we switched on the board, we plug the recovery jumper into the board. This jumper resets the board into this original state while starting and enables the Toradex Easy Installer to be installed. Of course, you don't need the recover if you're using the board for the very first time. Now we switched on the board. In the next step, I start the Toradex Easy Installer, which I have already downloaded. Click on the Windows Recovery Batch file and watch everything installs by magic. Don't forget to remove the jumper before you continue. Now we need the Windows Device Manager, a terminal program and a VNC viewer. We look in the Device Manager for the number of the serial port. In our terminal program we select Serial, enter the serial port number and at the baud rate we put in 115200. Now we start the terminal program and we can find out the IP address with entering IP space A 
enter. Here we see the IP address and this IP address we put it in the VNC viewer. And there it is. Here we can now see a list of possible operating systems and decide it on the Tryzen core. After installation, please switch the board off and on again. By default, Toradex uses HDMI for image transfer to the monitor. Now we will customize the device tree to implement the image transmission via LVDS. To do this, we switched to our terminal program. After restarting the board, we can log in with the login data to Ryzen and to Ryzen. To change the device tree, enter the comments from the screen capture into the terminal. Please understand that I will not comment on every entry at this point. Before I forget, our industrial carrier boards are one-to-one -one pin compatible with the Toradex dev boards. So you can take the system on module and simply plug into our board. That's great, or? We at Carriertronic have adapted the Toradex Easy Installer so that you can save time and no longer have to adapt the device tree yourself. Go to carriertronic.com slash 4devs and download the easy installer. Enjoy and recommend us. Bye bye. So, thank you for watching this. Maybe you have a lot of questions. We will have a QA a little bit later. And before I show you the next video, I uh, have a question for you. So, which interface for the touch controller are you intending to use? Just five seconds. And then we see the results. Oh, the ice courtesy is um, the most common. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. Thank you for this. And um, I have prepared another video because um, we want to show you um, we want to show you how easy it is to um, yeah, bring your um, own uh, application to the um, board or to your device. So first of all, your device needs um, a power supply and uh, needs the connection to the uh, Ethernet. Oh, here you see uh, one of our um, uh, one of our devices. And yeah, for sure, uh, it's always the 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 password is always Horizon, and the user ID is Horizon too. So this is very easy. Mm. So how do you get the IP address? I showed in the first video when you have the IP address. So in this Part we connected our uh, Visual Studio code with the device. And then it's very important that you set this as the default device, because the default device is the device which you're working with. Now we can install the Horizon uh, example. I choose the Qt example here. I trust the author and yeah, I run Docker and after that I run the application. For sure, uh, pay attention that you choose the right core. And then you see the example from Torex. So the second uh, the second thing I want to show you for this video is how to can uh, how you can use your own GitHub um, um, repo. 
So click on clone repository, choose the right one, download it, trust the author, set as default, it's the same way as before, and pay attention that the Docker containers are running, choose the right core and run the application. So, and in this case, you see an example application from Carriotronic. So we have this application. When I go to a customer and want to show him how cool our multi-touch function uh, is. So, thank you for watching this. Um, so, I've done with uh, with my content. Um, Matthias, I guess, um, you have a question for the audience too. Yeah, um, thank you for being back here. Um, so yes, so we have now a Q&A session, uh, but before that I have a question and it's, how do you typically develop your embedded system? So if you would start now answering, that would be great. Okay, a few more seconds. Okay. Great. Okay, that's interesting. So, um, uh, buy and sock can do the completely design. Okay, and buy. Um, uh, okay, that's that's pretty interesting. So, uh, thank you for 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 sharing this information. We support you on all the ways of this. Um, and I want to wrap that up very quick. Um, so um, with with Toradex, you know, you have not only the computer module, but you also our carrier boards, and we have mass market carrier boards and uh, partners like Carriotronics, who basically have also mass market carrier boards and even off the shelf display solutions. Um, to use with our boards or with their boards following the same standards and our development boards um the schematics for that the whole altium design file is open for you so what we do is we regularly redesign our basically development and carrier boards so that the parts on this are long time available parts and so on and you get all the footprints the whole library in 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 the altium and you can basically modify and go for your own board and to help you there with completing your own design completely and develop a, car, a carrier design, which a big, big portion uh, of you basically uh, selected as an answer, we just offer basically design support. And that means on our website, if you go to toradex.com, you can actually um, under carrier board design there's a button you can click for a three 30 minutes consultation and then we can talk about your system design and we guide you through where you can find all the design guides and what are the most common mistakes in a design which we see often and that helped us tremendously reducing the mistakes uh, customers do in their design process. And once that's done, you can also request a carrier schematic and PCB layout review. And that can really bring your time to mark it down and avoid that you have several design spins. So what I now want to do is um, I want to basically open up for the for the for the questions. And I see already there is basically um, uh, uh, a first question. Um, and let me read the question. Why can't I use Colibri? I am X8 module version plus Viola and BSP6. No, I need kernel six or higher in my, uh, okay. I don't know that off the shelf of that BSP version. I don't know what if you can specify a little bit more what what the problem was to 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 use to use that. Um, so usually the the, the BSP uh, uh, the the BS, the newest BSP supports basically uh, our off the shelf uh, carrier boards. So. Uh, that would be something I would like to take offline and check in our forum or with a support email in order to see what the problem there is. But it should not 
by default be an issue. So, um, and I don't know by heart right now of what could be the issue there. So, um, um, okay. Uh, can I also adapt the device tree for other displays? Of course. Normally, when you use Yocto, right, you write a new device tree file and um, and you compile this. With using Horizon, you use overlays, and if you have to write your own overlay, you can do that, and you do not have to have um, uh, Yocto and compile it. The the Horizon uh, framework in our pro provides the so-called Horizon Core Builder, which basically does that for you. You can hand over your device tree and and compile it, and the background runs a container with Yocto doing that all for you. There are on our developer side. You always have to make sure there is the toridex.com kind of marketing focus site, and there is developer.toridex.com where you find all the articles, and there you find more about device trees. And also, if you then need us to check that, you can always send an email to support at toridex.com, and then we go and attach your device tree and also the PDF of your display, and then we can check there in the timings if that is all right and um, uh, and, 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 and help you basically adapt that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I have a question. Uh, and that's maybe something, uh, Mario, you could also answer here. The question is, how quickly can you develop a carrier board? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, now now you, 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 will, um, you will become the typical answer from a sales guy. Yeah? It depends. <laughs> so, <it's laughs> okay, I same. can... No, the, the, the thing is, um, I guess that we are have all issues and all combinations of interfaces on carrier boards. We have the solution for this. So often uh, building a new carrier board is just a new composition of interfaces. So this could be very, very fast. Um, we can develop this very fast. But yeah, sometimes the customer has very, very special um, requirements. Uh, I don't know, maybe it must be very, very small. You need power over Ethernet. You need maybe, maybe uh, uh, DSI, maybe CSI on a small board or something. You have a lot of um, frequency uh, uh, issues to, to solve, then it, it, it takes a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, we can, in a, in a couple of weeks, you can have a, a, um, a, a prototype. Um, mm -hmm. You can have a prototype in a, in a couple of weeks. It's realistic and we can make the licensing um in the in the laboratory and all the stuff we can do this as a service too okay so my answer would also be weeks i've seen people two weeks doing a design and why it is because you have the altium design files for our carrier boards what some customers do is they just put off that board what they don't need or add their things right and then you could uh, in in our design review process basically look over this and that prevents basically multiple design spins and i highly recommend to go basically to the toradex dot com site then browse to carrier board development and there is this button and 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 set up uh this first call because we set up the call because very often the information how to do it right is there but it's a lot of information if someone guides you through you can shortcuts many hours and focus on the most important stops and uh, then uh, since we do that, we do not see the typical problems, uh, which then customer come with a problem. We want to avoid that. But our idea is that you're super rapid. You could also, instead of buying our development board, manufacture by yourself. All the files for the, uh, for the carrier board is available to you. And so you can really uh, do that. Um, and if you have a partner like Couriotronic who worked several times with that, uh, then it's even faster. Okay, so I hope that answers it. Um, so here is one question. I don't really, uh, it says why I can't use RGB by eBay in my Viola Plus. Um, I mean, I have to look very quick here into the community. Uh, the IMX8 Viola Plus not start when I connect uh, RGB. Okay, so 
that's kind of what I hear very often. Only because a cable fits doesn't mean it fits. Basically, these standards like LVDS and RGB is not like USB or HDMI. It's not that the connector and pinout is specified. Every vendor can have a certain pin connector, have a different pins. So in a case like this, I would ask for looking at the data sheet and then you have to make an adapter for basically these um, for the the pinout. So in order to help do, uh, make that easier, we um, have a unified RGB port which we always keep the same. But you have to have a display which follows the same pinout, right? And this is also why LVDS is so great you can customize the plugs with rgb because of uh, the signal integrity the routing on the flat wire you know you have to make a custom adapter to the pin out of the display you're using and with an lvds it can be as simple as making basically just a connector with the with the twisted pair wire cables on the, on on that uh happening but it's not that something has a flat wire with 40 pins it has the same pin out it's not a generic kind of uh plug or standard you know it's just that it has rgb parallel signals and you can basically uh uh, must be an interposer. So this is why the idea of the interposer, MEPI DSI you seen to LVDS is a great way also for your carrier board. So usually I always recommend customers who would not use LVDS uh, and use these old ones to have some form of interposer board in between so that the display is end of life, you, you don't have to redesign the carrier board. But it's all things we talk in depth in our carrier design call. Um, the next question. I'm working with a Verdin IMX8M Plus with the native LVDS connection. And most of the colors seem to be off by a lot. Uh, what the tools process would look like to fix that? So first of all, what kind of display you use because these displays have different timings like again lvds rgb is just a level or a signal and standard but it's not a protocol generic protocol like hdmi who negotiates something discovers and sends that so if there is something off of the pixel clock or, for example, um, when you have the uh, LVDS cable connected and you would have the wrong color pairs there or just some timing could all cause for that. And that if it's the timing issues and so on, we usually can adjust that in the device tree file or overlay and adapt that. So the process here is to write a ticket at the community. Or, and then we get back to you and we'd ask for more questions, like, is it a custom carrier board? Want to take a look at this? Um, what is the wiring pin out? And then we go over this. But we've seen issues there or people had some other stripes. And it's often kind of basically that um, uh, the data the display wants to see is not what it basically gets. Mm -hmm. So please uh, uh, give us a ticket there and we will answer. Um, the, the which LVDS voltage is used by default. Um, I, you know, that's kind of the LVDS standard we use there. And um, for more, I have to look in my documentation, my data. I don't have that now open here in the presentation. Um, but like I said, so usually we look at the data from the LVDS display. And, um, and and the pin mapping, and then we help you adapt actually the device tree file. If you go with someone like Carriotronics, you have a compatible solution where you just load the overlay and it works basically with, with our boards and ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Does the new IMX95 have LVDS like the IMX M Plus and are they on the same pins? So the new imx 95 which is upcoming we are the makers of the development board um nxp is using there the module has a longer form factor it was just uh, to get uh because of the the, the better models also power hungry but it will have the same form factor and therefore the same standard and reserved pins will be there 
and additional features like a faster Ethernet that will be then on these uh, uh, um, uh, reserved pins uh, category. But it is a Verdin compatible module. If you want to check which module supports native LVDS, uh, because the Verdin family has uh, as the guaranteed interface MIPDSI, right? And if you would use the mini, not the plus, you would have only this. And if you need LVDS, you would have the MIPI LVDS connector. But if you go for the plus, you then have the native LVDS as well. And But the standard definition of interfaces we specify all Verdin modules have that. If you design your carrier board that way, they're all going to be compatible. But if a system on chip, the processor provides a native interface, we have reserved pins and you will find it there. To check which one is supporting that, we have the so-called pinout designer where you can compare the signals, put your desired interfaces, and you can see if they all there, right? The standard configuration, all of them support, but if you want to do your specific thing and you want 100 GPIOs, you can check which modules can do that with the Pinout Designer. Uh, I do an introduction to Pinout Designer also in our in our um, uh, call on carrier, carrier design call. Okay. Mm. Is there any other question, uh, more question? Um, I saw people saying they want to use I2C at the most over USB. The display we showed now here is, for example, one with USB. And that and the, the, the question, what is the advantages over one uh, with USB we talked before? And and the, the, the benefits of... Um, of a USB over touch controller I2C is if you would have applications with different scale of uh, the screen and so on, and um, th then it's generic. You do not have a driver. Some touch panel controller could be an Atmo touch panel con controller, some another vendor, and you have to check if the driver there and is that enabled. And so you're a little bit more generic there with the USB. But though I agree in the most applications, we see the LVDS, right? But uh, in some applications, it's really a benefit to have that generic USB where you do not have to adapt anything uh, to, to operate. And uh, Carriotronics has that systems like that. Then uh, I have another question. So that was the question, what benefits does USB uh, for the touch controller has? So we basically, uh have answered that okay then i go to the question um is thunderbolt part of your usb c no um usb thunderbolt is um if you have, let's say thunderbolt is a different protocol which you find more on x68 solutions and then there is a way which is complex where you can use certain data pairs of USB-C in in order to basically um, uh, in order to use that lanes for that serial PCI Express. You could say that is Thunderbolt. That's um, not a part of USB-C. Our things support USB-C, and there is a separate talk on USB-C also which I encourage you to check the webinar. And there you can do display port over USB-C and you could basically put the Thunderbolt over the USB-C, but you have to have Thunderbolt at some point. It's not that USB-C is one data protocol which does on software layer that, it's really just a connector and you plug USB-C into it, Thunderbolt and display port, and then you have a fabric a CC controller, which would switch to their protocols, right? It's separate protocols, a separate hardware over the same connector. Okay, the question, what benefits USB for a touch controller? We had that already. Uh, how can we buy the display from Carriotronics? I give that to Mario, that question. <laughs> so Mario, what's the best way to connect to get the oh, Carriotronics display? It it's very easy when you uh, go on carriotronic.com um you you will find contact data there there's a contact formula you can you can send that or you can make an appointment um, with me 
uh, there and I will answer very, very fast on that. So, um, yeah, for, for the question is uh, when, when you want the price, um, how much pieces uh, uh, you want, and when you have questions. So, um, you find on, on, on the products, you find um, on, the, on the products on the website, you find um, uh, a touch panel. Um, PCs and there you will find data sheets and when there's not a data sheet write me an email and I will send you um, uh, I will send you the, the information that you need okay thanks so maybe you can also offer the next one the display available in different form factors so what's your offering uh, Mario and what can you provide on the display side mm -hmm. yes yeah, so we 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 have some um, we have some sizes here in the storage. Um, typical uh, seven um, seven inches, ten point one inch, um, twelve point uh, six inch, and a little uh, and some a little bit bigger size. Um, but it it depends on the customer's um, requirements. So when you need a special, um, you have special requirements. You can make. Um, we can we can make displays for um, I don't know um, LED uh, uh, displays very very small one we can integrate that in in the glass um, front so yeah it, it, when you have any so so we are uh, we see ourselves as a, a full service um, and uh, for full service implementing um, the the solution so it is it. We can sell just the carrier board. We can sell the carrier board in an environment. So we got an IPC and gateway or touch panel PC, um, and we can make specialized integrations because we got a designer here in in our team, and so we can make uh, full integrations of glass and and all the stuff. Okay, so the um, so the best day is to contact there in 2C and also check our website. There you find the link to Carriotronics under the partner section. Then I have one more question here. Do you have also provide other displays than LVDS? For development on our store, we our displays are only for development. There we have MEP, RGB, and LVDS displays. But uh, yes. You have to... Um, Sorry, when I when I can say something yeah. about this, it depends on the size on the display. Yeah, so um, the the smaller the smaller displays till uh, seven inches are um, uh, RGB uh, uh, displays, and up to seven inches are LVDS displays. And when you have the seven inch display, you have to look at it because you, you know, both um, 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 both interfaces are come uh, it could could be possible. So sometimes um, it depends on the, in, uh, on the on the size of the display. Yeah, and and like if you want MEP, we see MEP in smaller display with high resolution or certain special form factors like long landscape modules and so on. Yes, then we help. Usually, it's always support in, involved because the MEP displays have a MEP controller, and we adding more and more to uh, our our drivers that they can talk to each other and and and, and adapt that right. So. Um, there, there we also provide the, the support for that, and and there's also some displays vendors who have uh, DSI displays, not packaged like a, uh, the one from from Carriotronics, but Carriotronics could put in whatever you want for a display in order to provide it to you. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean. Um, um, Thank you for part your participation and also the, the feedback you give us. And we're looking forward to hear from you in our forums and support and contact Mario. And so uh, thank you very much for uh, joining uh, that webinar. That webinar will be available to as a recording and the information will be sent to you in the next week. Um, Mario, you have something still to add? Um, oh no, I, I just um, say thank you to the audience. Uh, thank you, Matthias, for this great job. Um, and um, yeah, thank you that that I could uh, could be here. Um, thanks for this opportunity. So. Um,
see you soon maybe next year on the embedded world uh, we see us all together right don't forget that okay thank you and have a wonderful evening or day wherever you are in the world right now thank you goodbye